Good morning to you. We are glad to have you worshiping with us. We know that you have different options to choose from as far as worship and services are concerned. And we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. As usual, we have great worship and a great word in store for you. One that we believe that will change your life. And we pray that as this service goes on, that you will really connect with God and have a wonderful time. So God bless you and please enjoy your worship. In Romans 6, 6 to 7, it says, We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. In Philippians 2, 5 to 11, it tells us, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born, born servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And then being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him that name that is above all names, that every, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. By your stripes, by your stripes we are healed by his nail pierced hands we're free by his blood Wash clean now we have the victory our sin is broken Jesus overcame it all he has won our freedom Jesus has won Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
morning, we're going to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, reading from verse 1 to verse 12, and it reads, And it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they, and they are in Hezazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast through all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Moxir, whom you will not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you. Our mighty Father, today we bless you and thank you for your word. We pray today that you will use me, O oh God, to bring the word to your people and that your people will be receptive to what you have to say to them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning I want to share um, on the subject, overcoming your fears with faith. Overcoming your fears with faith. Now, one thing that we have to get in our heads and on our minds and our spirits, that God never intended us to have a problem-free or trouble-free life. Even Jesus himself said that every day has its trouble or its evil. So life is not going to be easy and we're going to have some times where we have some good times, we will have some bad times, but we will have trouble. We will have trouble. And all the, the great men and women of God had trouble. And if we are believers of Jesus Christ, we have to arm ourselves with the same mindset that we will have some trouble. The reality is, nothing is wrong with trouble, because it is when we are going through trouble that we get to see the power of God being manifested. When something comes to us that is beyond our strength and beyond our power, then we tap into God's power because we have the grace of God that is always sufficient. So we have to understand that God never intended us to have a life that is problem-free or trouble-free. Now, the Bible tells us here that the, the brother Jehoshaphat um, had a company, about a, a multitude of people were coming against him. The Bible says the people of Moab, in verse 1, the people of Ammon and others beside them came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And the word of God says that somebody came and said to Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And whenever you hear that a great multitude is coming against you, that can, strive, that can cause us to be fearful. That can drive some, some, some fear in our hearts. Or in your heart. And the, the Bible says that the brother feared in verse 3. It's here saying in verse 3 uh, that Jehoshaphat feared 
and set his heart to seek the Lord. Look at that fear first. He says he feared. Jehoshaphat feared. Now, what does fear mean? Fear, fear means to be afraid or to feel anxious or apprehensive about a situation or an event. Well, well, well this is a good time um, to really feel fearful because the Bible is here saying that a multitude is coming against you. So you have one man against a, a group of people, a company of people coming against uh, him. And the Bible says here that he feared. Uh, he feared. And we said that fear means to feel, to be afraid or to feel um, anxious. Now, fear can paralyze people. Fear can paralyze people. Fear can put you, if you're not careful, in a straight jacket. Fear can put you in handcuffs. Fear can bind people and stop people from moving. Fear can cause you to do some very funny things. And it says here that the man who knows no fear is not only a gross exaggeration he is a biological impossibility i can read that one one more time the man who knows no fear is not only a gross exaggeration he is a biological impossibility all that is saying that we will have fears i know we quote the scripture that perfect love casts out fear that is true that does not stop us from having fears sometimes you become afraid some of the greatest warriors and the greatest men of god and men uh, women of god had times where they were fearful. You can ask, you better call it Elijah. Elijah called on fire from heaven. And then after uh, he heard that a woman called Jezebel was coming for him, he got afraid and he was terrified. So we have to understand that fears and trouble will come against us. Now, <laughs> there was a story that I heard about this young man who was driving in a city and the Bible says that, the Bible says, where the illustration says that, that the, he was driving in the city and while driving in the city, he saw this lady and she fired him down and he picked her up. And when he, after the driving for a, a good while, he recognized that the world lady that was sitting next to him was really the, the dreaded disease called cholera. And he got alarmed and the, the lady said to him, I am only responsible for killing 10 people with cholera in this city. And he said to her, actually she said to him, she gave him a, a knife and she said to him, if, on, if more than 10 people in this city die, you can kill me. So when he got to the city now, over a hundred person died. But she said that only she's only responsible for 10 people. So he went now to, to, to take the knife to, to kill her. And she said, wait, 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 wait. I only killed 10. But fear killed the rest. Fear killed the rest. Sometimes the reality is that fear can kill people and not a disease. Fear can kill people and not a, 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 an, an operation or a situation. Sometimes we worry ourselves to death. We kill ourselves by just having fears. But we have to understand today, we have to overcome our fears by faith. Because we are the people of God. Let's look now at the brother called the brother, called brother Paul. Paul has some trouble as well. Paul says to us here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10, he says... For we do not want you to be ignorant or unaware, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. He said trouble. We had trouble. Paul had trouble. And listen to this. He says that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. The Apostle Paul is saying, we have some trouble that came to us. And it was, we were burdened beyond measure. Now think about that for a little bit. He was burdened beyond measure. And he was burdened above strength. 
so that he despaired even of his life. So the apostle came to a point in time where he exhausted his strength. He exhausted all the power that he had. Now, how did the apostle Paul get out of this situation? He said here that he had the sentence of death in himself, but he said that God delivered him from so great a death. Now, how does God deliver his people? When we roll upon him our every care. That's what the writer says. We have to roll and cast our cares Unto Jesus. So when we get difficulty, the first thing we need to do is to roll our difficulty off from ourselves onto Jesus because he's able to handle it. So Paul says that he was burdened beyond measure and above strength. Now, people of God, we fear things that we can't normally fix, that we that that that, that we that we cannot fix. We normally fear things that we cannot fix. So, in essence, if you can handle a situation, it's cool. As soon as we can't handle a situation then, and it's out of your hands, it is serious. Now, when you have persons that are made redundant, when you have persons that are laid, or when you have persons that have been fired, or when you have persons that, that are not working, but the postman is still coming, bringing bills, and have a mortgage to pay, that can cause some person to fear, because that seems to be a situation that you cannot fix. So you fear things that you cannot fix. And there are things that God alone can fix and God alone can handle. So we can handle some things. There are some things within, there are some things within our power, within, within our, our grasp that we can deal with. And then there are things that are out of our capacity to handle. Now let me say this here early, early, early. When something is beyond you, you have to understand, yes, it can bring fear, but you have to understand that you have a good opportunity to see God move in your life. When something is beyond your strength, beyond your power, when you can't fix it, when you have no way, when you are pulling out your hair, when the days are like, when the days are like last Saturday when we rose up from, from, from sleep and the, 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 all the ash was covering um, the, 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 the sun and outside got so dark that even the, the, um, the street lights came on. Darkness in the middle of the day from volcanic ash. When things get like that, when your circumstances get nebulous and you can't see, too far when things are difficult we have to understand people that we have to put all these things to God and God is going to be one that's going to change your circumstance let me tell you all something again too what do you think that God has so many names what do you think that God is called Jehovah Nissi Jehovah Shalom right what do you think that God is name God, God has all these names God has all these names because people recognize when, when they were down and out, God was this to them. When they were this way, God was that for them. God became their all in all. So they give God names, Anissi, Abana, Shalom, everything. They're giving God and giving God all kinds of names because they recognize that God is everything to them. So God is provider, he's shield, he's buckler, he's provider, he's a shepherd. He is everything to us. So the truth is, we have to give God the, the situation that we have. And when we give God the situation that we have, then God is able to change the situation that we are going through. Now, the Bible says that the brother feared. But fear should be a temporal thing for the people of God. Fear should be a temporal thing for the people of God. Now, fear is something that I believe that is normal. Because if you can't handle it, you will fear it. And the Bible says too, um, when the angels appear to people, they will say, fear not. Why? Because something out of the ordinary happened. If you saw, for some reason, if you saw this big angel appear onto you, it can frighten you because it's not something that is normal. Something that, 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 that is not a normal occurrence, basically. So, fear can grip people. But I want to say that fear is temporal. Fear is temporal because the Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. The Apostle Paul says it in the, in the, in the, in the epistles. The Apostle Paul said the just shall live by faith. The writer of Hebrews also said that the just shall live by faith. But Habakkuk says that behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. 
but the just shall live by his faith. Now understand, it says his faith. Now you and I have to understand that my faith is not your faith. I can believe something and, 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 and you may not believe the way I believe or you may believe something and I may not believe it. Like you, let me make a good illustration now. It was a lady in Silver Sands called Sister Griffith. I think the first name is Alvita Griffith. And I, she, 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 has, she had an amazing faith. And she, she would believe when, when we will be saying that can't happen. She is believing God for that. Though she had a faith that was very strong. And she believed God. So I'm saying too that we have to understand the just shall live by his faith. His own personal faith. What he believes. Because faith is like an oxygen. Like it's an like oxygen for the believer. Now, now before we get to that point, let me just say this here. The just shall live by faith. Now, sometimes we have faith when something goes wrong. Our faith kicks in. If somebody is sick and we need to pray, then um, we, our faith kicks in. If we have to do something, um, then our faith kicks in. Something happens, then we believe God. I'm saying no, 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 no. Faith is not supposed to kick in and kick out. The Bible says that we shall live by faith. So it's not that something happens and you believe God and something happens and you don't believe. No, the judge is living by faith. Now, I say here that faith is like oxygen for the believer. Before oxygen, the believer will die. Before oxygen, we will die. Before faith, we have no relationship with God. We cannot get anything from God except through faith. The Bible says that he that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is what gets God to move. Right? So we have to live by faith. Everything that we do is a faith thing. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live. But Christ is the one who's living in, in me. He said, I live, but not yet I. Christ is living in me. The life now, I now live, I live by faith. I live by faith. We have to understand that the just shall live by faith. Because faith is like oxygen. And so the Christian life is a faith walk. It's a walk of faith. From the time you accept Jesus to the time you die, it's a walk of faith. We don't have faith that cuts in and cuts out. Faith is consistent. That's what I'm saying, that fear should be temporal. Fear can come to interrupt your faith, but we have to understand that when you fear, roll it off to God quickly and get back your focus. Let's define faith. Let's see what faith is. We define fear. Let us see what um, faith is. According to the NIV, it says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Being sure. So you are hoping for something, but you are sure that what you're hoping for, that you will get it. You, you are sure that what you're hoping for, that it is there, that you can receive it. And it also says, it says certain about what you do not see. So the, per, the reality is that faith has nothing to do with my two eyes or your two eyes. Faith has nothing to do with that. Stevie Wonder, who has not, who doesn't have light, or doesn't have sight rather, can't believe God. It's not about sight. Being certain about what you cannot see. The Amplified Bible puts it this way. The Amplified says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the tighter deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. It says, being what? Proof of the things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. It says faith is the assurance or the confirmation or the title deed. When you have a title deed in your hand, it means that you have, you have proof that you own a piece of property or something. So if faith is, is, is seen as the confirmation of the title deed, it means that what you have as faith, you, 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 you actually have possession of something. So when you come into God's presence, 
Faith gives you the power to enter in and to get things from God's storehouse. Faith is the key then that unlocks your blessings. Yes, please. That's why the just shall live by faith. Jesus says that everything that he has belongs to us. And all we need is to go in there and unlock it by faith. So faith is the title D, the confirmation. And then it says here, faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So I can believe something that, 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 that basically I don't see with my eyes or hear with my ears or feel or whatever, but I still have it. I still grasp it. Let me explain it a little, a, little, a little further. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. You put it that way. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. What is currency? Currency is the circulation as a medium of exchange. Something such as a coin, treasury notes, or bank notes that is in circulation as a medium of exchange. So all that is saying, um, in Barbados, we use credit cards, we use Beijing money, we, uh, we, we, we can handle a US money as well. Uh, we have EC in the Caribbean, I don't know if we use that as an exchange. But the reality is that if you can provide a Beijing dollar in Barbados to the supermarket, then you can get goods. If you have, if you know to buy a bag of cement, and you have the money for the bag of cement, you pass the money and you get the cement, or or the stuff is passed and you get this and, and you give the money. So all it is that you're exchanging. Now, when it comes to the kingdom of God, faith is what we use. Don't forget, we're overcoming all fears by faith. Faith by fears by faith. We are using faith to get God to move on our behalf. God recognizes faith. And that's the only thing that gets God to move. Now watch this carefully, people. As a Christian, how are you saved? You are saved by grace through faith. So if you don't have faith, you are no longer a Christian. You are justified by faith. And the Bible says you have peace with God. So if you don't have faith, you're not justified. It means that you're still in your sins. Faith is the thing that you and I have to understand that we have to live by down to the end. And once we begin to exercise faith over and over and over, God is saying, I, that is what I live by. That is what I recognize as the medium for exchange. And if Wendell can provide the faith, I can give Brenda what he needs. If you can provide the faith, then you will get what you need. So faith is basically um, the kingdom currency, the currency of the kingdom or the money in the kingdom. What we use money for? To exchange it for something. You want to buy bread? You exchange your bread for some money. If you don't have the bread, sorry, if you don't have the money, you may not get the bread, right? But the reality is in the kingdom what we are looking at here now is that the, the currency that God recognizes and accepts is faith. The currency that God recognizes and accepts is faith. Look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. It says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive and you will have. What is belief? Faith. So when you say, Lord, I want this husband. Lord, I want this wife. Lord, I want this girl. I want this house. Lord, I want to succeed in my exams. And you, and, and you see that you have it. Walk away from there as having it. Another illustration. Those 10 lepers that came to Jesus and said, have mercy upon us. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they walk away, as they walk away, they were cleansed. So the reality that all 10 of them were cleansed means or, or meant that they had faith. So they believed Jesus as the healer and as they were going to show themselves to the priest, they were healed. So they were healed from the moment God said that they, that they asked Jesus, for this, for this, um, for this healing, uh, as they were going towards the, the, the temple, they showed themselves to the priest. They found that they were healed. Why? Because they believed God. And once you believe God, you can have the petition. Whatever you want, 
the, 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 the petition was, have mercy upon us. We want our leprosy to go. When they believed Jesus and walked away, they were actually walking by faith and they were healed as they were going. What I'm saying here now, they believe and it manifested. When you, it's saying here that when you pray, believe that you receive it and you will have it. So we can come, we can, we can shut our eyes and enter into God's to our house and say, Lord, I need you to give me a breakthrough. Lord, I am in this situation for too long. Lord, I want to come out of this in the name of Jesus. And you walk away from that, from that, from that place, believing that you have gotten your breakthrough, you will have your breakthrough because you have it. Because faith is what? Title deed. Proof that you have the thing that you are requesting. So when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have them. Those devils walk away and they got the stuff. I want to say some more thing on faith. Because we're looking at overcoming your fears by faith. Faith gets God moving. Faith gets Jesus moving. Jairus' daughter was in trouble. She was sick. He came to Jesus and he asked Jesus about healing her. The Bible says that Jesus rose up and followed him. You, faith actually gets God moving. Puts God into in action. Whenever he sees faith, he runs to that person because faith is like, what to put it? Faith is, faith is like um, what God loves to receive. Whenever God sees that God is running to come in to fix the situation because that's the currency of the kingdom. So he walked with the vela. And listen to this carefully. The Bible says that when he got down to halfway because he held he healed the lady with the issue of blood and when he was um on the way there somebody said don't trouble jesus anymore because she has died jesus looked at him and said do not fear only believe and that man got his daughter raised from the dead jesus was saying brother man what we just heard just now can cause your faith to dwindle. But I want you to understand. I want you to, I want you to still believe that I can do this even though the situation has changed. Still believe that I can do this. And he believed Jesus and he had his daughter raised in life. There are many other instances, but you want to move on from here now. Now, back to the brother. The brother feared. But what he did is that he turned his fear into a prayer. The Bible says here in verse 3 and verse 4, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. So he turned his fear into a prayer. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast through all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. People of God, where do you go when you find yourself in trouble? Where does fear push you? Where does fear push you? Does fear push you out of God's presence? Or does fear push you into God's presence? If fear has been pushing you out of God's presence, if fear has been, if fear has caused you to leave the church of God or leave the body of Jesus Christ, I want to understand. Take your situation and make it a prayer. The Bible says the multitude is coming against Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat is saying, I am going to take this situation that, that, that has caused me to be fearful. I'm going to put this situation in God's hand because God is able to change it. The Bible says he proclaimed a fast. So he called the whole nation. He said, look, this is not only about me. This is all about us. Let us fast. Let us seek the Lord. So turn what you fear into a prayer. Uh, if you can turn what you, fear into a, what you fear into a prayer, it means that your faith now has kicked in. Your faith now is working. Because if you are praying to God about a situation, you must believe that God can change it. Otherwise, why, why are you going to pray to God if you do not believe that he can change it? The fact the Bible says that the brother feared but set himself to seek the Lord, it tells me something. Fear is not where we're supposed to be. We can be fearful at times, but let fear push you into the presence of God. He proclaim a fast. And not only that, the Bible says, Jehoshaphat sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. Psalms 34, verse 4 to 6 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. Praise God. 
I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I love that. And deliver me from all of my fears. People, we will have situations that are bigger than us. But when you turn your fear into a prayer, you can get God's power to work out the situation for you. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him. Praise God again and save him out of all his troubles. When you turn what you fear into a prayer, you are guaranteed deliverance. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his fears and all of his troubles. People, we will have troubles. We will have situations. Proverbs says that the righteous will come through trouble. God knows how to deliver the godly out of their trials and out of their temptation, out of their situations. God is able to do far above all that we can ask or think. So turn your circumstance, people, your fear, into a prayer. People of God, verse 12, says to us, O oh, our God, Will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. He says we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. People, sometimes you have diseases that you have no power over. You have circumstances that you have no power over. It does not make sense to worry and fret yourself about it. Turn those things into a prayer. What do you do when you do not know what to do, people? Is the question. What do you do when you do not know what to do? The brother says, we do not know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. So what do you do when you do not know what to do? What the, song, what the psalmist says, Hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer from the ends of the earth where I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. He says, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. O oh Lord, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. So what do you do when you do not know what to do? That's the question. Recently in this COVID time, Lord of mercy, we had so many challenges. This weekend that we had, last weekend we had, we had the volcano in St. Vincent. And we woke up on Saturday morning to ash or ashes, and 10 o'clock in the morning, when it's supposed to be bright, the sun was covered by ashes. And many of us, I told my neighbor, I believe that the street lights will soon come on, and I saw the street lights coming on at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, and at 12 o'clock a day, when it's supposed to be bright. Something that, that as serious like that. But I want to say something to today. Even though you, you have situations that are difficult, you may have the, 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 the ash blocking the sun rays. You may have um, situations that have your eyes so cloudy. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what the answer is. Let me tell you all something. When you don't know what to do, you keep your eyes upon God. Listen to what the brother is saying here. We do not know what to do but we are looking to you for help. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 12 from the New Living Translation says, we do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. So the, situ so the reality is, as I said earlier, there are things that we cannot fix. And God has not put them in our hands, in our power. But he has the power to change them. So all I'm saying today, we will have fears, but when we fear stuff, bring our fears before God and keep looking to Jesus what do you do when you do not know what to do? You keep your eyes upon Jesus. Psalms 25 and verse 15 says, My eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. 
What do you do? We do not know what to do. Psalms 141 verse 8 and 9 says, But my eyes are upon you, O Lord. My eyes are upon you, O God, the, the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. What do you do when you do not know what to do? You keep your eyes upon Jesus. You keep looking to God. And I'm saying to you, God is the one that we have to look to in these times. All these things are happening. It seems as if we can't leave home. Everything looks wrong. You're always in your home. They, uh, we don't have church as we normally have it. Uh, worship as we normally have it. Things are changing. But let me tell you something. Don't ever change in looking to Jesus. Keep your eyes always on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus all the time. Your brother says, we do not know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Why? They're looking for God. They're looking to God for help. I'm saying today to you, God has the power to change your circumstance. God has the power to change what you are going through. The only thing that you need to do is to take your situation and give it to Jesus. Now, further down in this text, they didn't even have to fight because the battle was the Lord's. But let me tell you all something. You know why the battle is the Lord's? The battle is the Lord's because you take what you are fearing, you take your situation, and you give your battle to God. So this situation that you cannot handle, you give it to God because then the battle becomes the Lord. God is fighting your battles for you. I praise God for this. People, we cannot fix everything. We cannot fix everything. There are some things that are beyond our power beyond our control only god can fix everything and if we can fix everything there's no use or there's no, no reason to have some person called god but the reason why we have some person called god is because he wants to show us the power that he has he wants to bring forth his power out of us and i'm telling you something today the apostle paul says i glory in tribulation and i glory in infirmity because when i'm weak then I am strong. Let me say this too in closing. Grace is so powerful. Paul says, God said to him, my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in weakness. It was God's grace and God's strength empowering Paul to do what he couldn't do naturally. So for us, we have to understand that grace is not only our merited favor, Grace is not only God giving us something that we do not deserve or we didn't work for, but grace is also a power. Grace is power. Paul told Timothy to be strong in the grace of God. Grace is power. So people of God understand this today. Jehoshaphat had people coming against him. He feared. But he did not allow fear to paralyze him. He did not allow fear to kill him. But he recognized that God is able to deliver him from all of his fears. People of God, I'm saying to you today, God is able to deliver you out of all of your fears. And I want you today, since you have heard this teaching, whatever you are fearing, I want you to open up your mouth, find a corner of the house or wherever you are, and just tell God about your situation. Lift your situation up to Jesus. Jesus has the capacity to carry any load that you bring upon him. It may be heavy for you, but light for him. God's hand is never too sharp that he cannot do what he has to do. God is all powerful. And God wants to show himself strong in your life today. So if you have a situation this morning, I want you to raise that situation up. Tell God about your situation because God is really standing by it. God is passing by even this moment to deal with your situation. Jehoshaphat, at the end of this text, had a victory that he didn't have a fight for. But the reality is, he set himself to seek the Lord. If you seek the Lord, you'll be found by him. 
But if you keep the circumstance to yourself, it can cause some stress for you and it can ultimately destroy your life altogether. But let me tell you something. God basically has too many victories that he has won and you can be one that he will win for you as well he can win one for you today as well he can change around your life today i want you to just give everything you have to god and watch god move in your life god bless you let us pray father this morning we give you thanks for your word you overcoming our fears lord by faith Father, I pray that we would be mindful, O oh Father, that you can do all things. You can do all things. You're the all-powerful God. Father, there are many persons who are hurting. There are many persons who have challenges and situations that are beyond them. They're carrying so much weight. There are persons, Lord, who may be going through depression, Lord Father, going through so many hardships, Lord Father. As I said before, Lord, loss of job and work and all that kind of stuff and still have things, oh God, that present themselves. Father, I really pray today in Jesus' name that you will bring deliverance. You will help these people, Father. I pray that you will lift their burdens. You alleviate the suffering that they're going through in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that their souls will be saved as well. Any person that, that does not know you as Lord and so that they will come, oh God, and ask you into their life this morning. Father, I pray that the burden of sin will be released in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will just cause all of us to be light and to be free in your presence. Father, just as you delivered Jehoshaphat, and just as he took steps to fast and to seek you and he found deliverance. Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that we will find deliverance and that you will give us victory on every side in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen and amen. God bless. In closing, I want to share something that I saw online. It says that fear has two meanings. The first meaning is forget everything and run or face everything and rise. What I want to add to this today is that we can only rise with Jesus. So we can face everything with Jesus and rise. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. God bless you and have a wonderful day.